welcome. I'm Tim and this is Tim BSC. Coming to you from uh, Guyania Anchorage. You can see over here we are in lightering operations. See this big tanker right here? This big tanker is uh, pumping off onto our barge and then our barge is going where the ship can't go because it doesn't have enough, uh, I mean it draws too much, too much draft. Meanwhile, I am hiding here in uh, in front of the wheelhouse only because the wind is blowing 19 knots and I uh, hope it's probably going to mess up the the microphones here. So anyway, this week's video is a little weird. I've uh, I was on the fence of whether or not I should do this or not. Um, I hope it doesn't get me in trouble, but uh, I think that uh, it's a I've been encouraged by other people to say that it has enough value that I need to share this with a bigger audience. What I'm talking about is I put together a video for my other channel, SV Paquita, for the sailing community, mostly the recreational sailing community, um, explaining the limitations of radar and the importance of an added layer of protection using AIS. And uh, anyway, um, that went well on my other channel and uh, I, you know after wrestling with this back and forth I've decided it's it's important enough to get it out to the bigger channel meaning over here on Tim B at C. So without any further ado uh, this is like I say it's uh, it's a video that was on my other channel many of you haven't seen that so I've put it on this channel hopefully you'll watch it and uh, just to let you know, uh, it seems as though through the comments and through the patrons, there's enough interest that I'm going to try to develop a uh, in-depth radar video, uh, something to do with radar theory and how to tune a radar and that sort of thing. So, anyway, hope you enjoy it. So this is supposed to be some sort of sailing channel. I like to think that one thing that makes my channel different than others is that I bring to the channel my entire career of uh or history of my career here um as working as a merchant mariner today i'm coming to you from work i'm uh the captain of a 4200 horse ocean going tug and we're presently working in the caribbean those that are familiar with my other channel tim b at sea will know all about that but i'm coming to you i'm trying to appeal to you today to have you guys understand, those of you that are sailboat owners, um, specifically sailboats, because what I'm talking about doesn't apply as much to power boaters, because there aren't a lot of power boaters that are out in the middle of the ocean. But I have to warn you, I don't think you guys understand the capabilities of radar. And, uh, you know, something else that I wanted to talk about was that, uh, you got to stop with the excuses and I know this sounds really hard and I shouldn't yell at the people that watch my channel but just follow with me here for a second assuming that you're somebody that is crossing oceans or maybe sailing down in the islands or maybe you're just a coastal cruiser but have an outstanding boat most of you guys aren't doing that with boats that are valued less than say a hundred thousand dollars I know there are people out there that go to sea in a bathtub and uh, I don't know why they do that but anyway the grant most the, the the majority of you out there are going to see with something a hundred thousand dollars and up into the multi millions of dollars the reason why I say stop with the excuses are a lot of times we justify one thing in our life and we say we need to buy this and we don't care how much it costs but then when it comes to other things especially concerning safety and stuff like that we say you know what we'll save a little nickel and dime here and that sort of stuff and when i say stop with the excuses i'm telling you guys and i'm going to explain this so so just bear with me all right i'm telling you those of you that uh have a boat and sail oceans or go down to the islands go anywhere and uh and you don't have ais or maybe the the ones that don't have ais uh, uh, that, that's really bad but a lot of you have been fooled and and i don't think i don't even think it's a possibility anymore because if you buy it now i don't even think they make just ais receivers and in my my i don't even believe they should but here's the thing if you're if you have bought an AIS receiver in other words you're not transmitting your location um, that's great as long as you're looking at it all the time 
if you have an AIS resp uh, transponder, then you also increase the odds that somebody else is watching out for you, that you're not only watching out for them. All right, let me stop this and get back to the uh, point of the video. Hello and welcome, I'm Tim and this is SV Paquita. Come along almost every week, whenever I get a chance to post a video, and follow along as I try to make the transition from being a professional lifelong mariner to cruising a sailboat, mostly offshore, but sometimes in the coastal waters. Right now we're in New England and we're getting ready to go through the Cape Cod Canal and uh, head up towards Maine spend the rest of the season in the Gulf of Maine. Just come along, strap in, and hope you like it. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you about the limitations of radar. Many people that uh, go places, go cross oceans, do all these sorts of traveling, they are under the false idea that as long as you have radar, people are going to see everything. And, uh, we have three radars on, on the tug that I work on, and they're very, very good radars and very expensive ARPA radars, um, state-of-the-art, four-foot, one another one's a five-foot open ray antenna, v much better than <laughs> almost all of the sailboats have out there. Having said that, I think a lot of you, <laughs> that sounds really bad. I think many people judge the effectiveness of the radar when they're using their own radar in ideal conditions. So in other words, it might be a glass calm day and you start dialing in your radar and you say, look, I can see my buddy's boat. And you call him up and your buddy says, I can see your boat. That's great. Um, yeah, that, that is great. That works well, and when it's night or foggy or rainy or snowy or any of those things happen, that'll be fine, as long as it's flat calm out. And uh, to illustrate what I'm trying to say, most of the boats that I see out here that are that that you know I, I are a potential uh, hazard for me are usually made out of fiberglass, and fiberglass doesn't reflect radar as well as say metal does. So when you check to see how your boat looks on radar on a beautiful flat calm day, be advised that on our radars here, on a flat calm day, not only can I pick up birds, and, and, and a lot of and fishermen know this because, you know, like a lot of sport fishing boats will even have a, a bird mode on their radar. So they pick up birds and they figure where the birds are is gonna be where the fish is and that sort of thing. Anyway, most of those birds don't have any metal on them unless they've been tagged or whatever. And so uh, in order to, to get a radar a signature on a bird, it's very, very difficult unless everything is perfect. The conditions are great. So why am I telling you all this? You probably say, oh, you know all that. Well, down here in the Caribbean and throughout the whole world, but especially down here where we're in the trade winds, um, I haven't been down here when we've been going inter-island here where we haven't seen a good five to eight foot all the time so there's there's a there's a lot of sea happening and it's happening all the time let me just give you an idea here i am in lime tree bay at the we're loading over here in uh saint croix and we are in the protected harbor right here now Waves never show up that well on camera, but we are way in on a protected harbor and the wind hasn't even started blowing. It's only nine o'clock in the morning here and the wind will really get going this afternoon. But you can see we have a good two to three foot of swell rolling in here and we're we're way in. So um, outside it's nasty. When we came up here, we got beat up really badly. Where that starts to apply to you guys is that when you assume that you just look my ra i don't need a radar reflector i'm going to show up fine and even if you have a radar reflector we see each other in other words i well, I'm, I'm, this is about a 105 110 foot tug we pull a barge that's over 400 feet long 
So another tug and barge and you know a 1200 foot container ship, we see those on radar just fine. But they're metal and they're high and they're big and they're way above the waves. Those are all things that most of you guys are not. So when it gets nasty, and when I say when it gets nasty, when it's normal down here, the odds of us, even with our superior radars of, to yours, of seeing things, there, there, there's, um, and you know, there's, there's a whole thing about adjusting your radar from the gain to the sea clutter, and then there's a, ra uh, there's a, a rain filter in there as well. I would tend to guess that most of you guys have that set on automatic. And you know what? That really does well when the conditions are right. But when the conditions are nasty and it's out there, it doesn't really matter. We're not going to be able to see you. Like I say, um, you can be in a, a 40 or 50 foot sailboat, aluminum sail, I mean, um, fiberglass sailboat sailing along, and you will throw a return when you're at the top of the wave and I'm at the top of the wave. The problem is all the other tops of the waves are going to throw similar returns as well. So when that happens, we have to turn our sea clutter down, uh, turn our sea clutter down to the point that we see you, but have it up enough that we try not to see the waves. And that works really well when the, when the seas are a lot less, but, but what it is around here, it's very hard to see you guys. So, so I just want, I'm not trying to tell you we can't see you. I'm not, I'm just saying that, well, let me, let me try to do this a different way. Um, in aviation, apparently pilots have something they call the big sky theory and that's that it's a big sky the odds of hitting somebody are very low and uh, so I, I'm sure that all of us out here have this big ocean theory especially when you're in the middle of nowhere and you don't see land anywhere and uh, look I don't want to put myself in a position that would suggest that I do anything dangerous but it would be silly for anybody who spends their life at sea in a commercial sense to say they haven't had a number of very, very, very near misses. And this is when uh, boats in the middle of the night, you can be looking out, you can see everything, everything you're going up and, and the, 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 the windows are all awash with green water. You're crashing through everything. And then all of a sudden there's a little light right in front of you and you got to get out of the way really quickly and uh that getting out of the way really quickly is very difficult for big boats and especially if you're towing a big barge to do so i'm not telling you not to do stuff and what i'm saying is if you are out here the first thing you should do is not count on everyone seeing you on radar if it's rough they're not going to see you until you're very close and then it pops up as a sol more solid target. The farther you are away, it looks like it's just sea clutter. So, uh, I mean, and, and now there's, there's going to be some of you couch captains out there that are going to uh, say, oh, you got to do this and you got to do that. Yeah, that's great, man. You, you, you do what you want. I'm just telling you, I've spent my life at sea. Um, <laughs> and we have to take radar courses all the time. We do all this sort of stuff. It's very difficult to see you guys when it's rough weather. So the first thing I would tell you is have it in your mind that just because we're out here and just because we are professionals and just because we have better equipment doesn't mean that we still can see you. So any of you that are on the fence about spending $100, maybe $200 on a couple, buying a radar reflector, permanently attaching it, the higher the better. Because if you attach a radar reflector, I've seen some people that actually have a radar reflector say, oh, when it's nasty, I put it in my uh, in my fishing rod holder. Man, that's right at the water line. I'm not gonna see that. If there's any sort of swell, you gotta, you gotta get up in, the, up in the air so I can see it, even when you're in the, in the trough, you know? So you need to put something up in your rigging so that, that, that and any little, anything will, the worst radar reflectors out there are better than no radar reflectors, all right? So that so that so that's a really big one. But I think, you know, what I was saying before is that you need to be cognizant that, that we don't see all and we don't know all. We are as human as you are. And that brings up another thing, and that's that 
I, I know you guys are all, I shouldn't say you, I shouldn't generalize so much. Many people will deny this, but all you need to do is watch YouTube videos and you can even watch it on my channel. I'm as guilty as anyone else is. When we're sailing and it's nice out there, a lot of times we have our back, you know, we're looking aft, we're not looking forward. And those of us that are looking forward might have a mast in the way, might have a sail in the way. Um, we might have our head right in the chart plotter. These are all things that take away from your situational awareness. But when it's nasty and you're in five to eight foot and you're cr beaten to weather and you're boom, 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 it's nasty. There are some of you that like to go down below. And when you're down below, even if you have a repeater down there, I don't know how much you guys see. I really don't. I mean, uh, like I say, uh, that's, that's to you. And, you, and there's some people who say, well, it's my life, I take my own risk. Yeah, you know what? That might be nice of you to say that and very bold, but I gotta tell you, and I don't know this firsthand, but I, I, I think about this, this is the stuff that haunts me. I don't wanna go through the rest of my life knowing that I ran somebody over, maybe their whole family or whatever, and it was just because I couldn't see them. So I try to keep a, a vigilant watch. I mean, we are required to have uh, adequate lookout, as are you. So. Anyway, I'm just, just telling you, look, sail the way you guys sail, but just know that we don't see a lot. And this brings up, brings me back full circle to the AIS point. Let me tell you a little story, and because of liability, I have to do this as if this, you, you, we're going to have to pretend all this, all right? So imagine that you are a, a merchant mariner, a captain, or a mate and you've been sailing for 20, 25, 30 years, you've got a lot of experience, and you're down in the Caribbean, and you're pounding into a head sea, and it's a, uh, you know, a good eight foot. The radar is awash um, with, with, with sea clutter. If you dial all that sea clutter out, you don't get to see anything. You won't even, you won't, you won't even see a super tanker if you dial it up too much. And, uh, it's very late at night. You haven't seen land for a watch, and you haven't seen any boats out here. Why would be they be out there? It's miserable out here. You wouldn't want to be there anyway. And you look down at something that you're doing, or you think about this, you miss the wife and kids, whatever it is. You look out the window and you see a light. Hopefully, hopefully it's uh, one that's running away from you. It could be a green light, it could be a red light or it could be a white light it could be a green and red light all those if they're uh, if you you instantly have to make a decision are are is this a threat because it's very close you didn't see it on radar and now you're within an eighth of a mile and you guys are closing on each other so you have to do something right away okay that's the scenario that i want to paint for you then what i want you to think of is if you spent a hundred thousand or I'm thinking that a lot of the boats I see down here, I'm no broker, but I'm thinking they're all between 250,000 and half a million dollars of the people that have, uh, you know, people my age where the kids have moved, you know, gone through college, moved out, they bought a boat. That's what I've done. And uh, so, so you have a substantial investment in this. And maybe they even have an AIS receiver. The problem is they're not getting any of that information because they might have their head in the bucket because they might be seasick. They might be down below doing something or who knows what happens. But because they don't have a transponder and because I can't see them on radar because it's really rough, they just blend in with the rest of the sea clutter. Had they had a transponder, you would see an AIS target show up miles away. And we could instantly figure out I mean, if you had the whole screen awash with sea clutter, there's going to be one triangle, which is going to be the AIS target. So if, there's, if you're going to be sailing oceans, stop being cheap. You spent all this money on your boat. If you have an AIS receiver, throw it out and go buy an AIS transceiver. Um, they used to be thousands of dollars. I think that you could probably get them now for less than 500. I think you think in some cases even half of that maybe. But anyway, how much are you going to put a price on your life? This is real stuff, and I'm, I'm not trying to scare anyone, but I'm trying to I'm trying to appeal to you. 
because I can do everything right and still run you over, never meaning to. It's just nasty out here. So get yourself, first of all, get it in your head that we don't see you all the time. When it's rough out here, we don't see you. Second of all, get it in your head too that we are just as human as, as you are, and humans are not infallible. And then uh, spend a little bit of money, like a fraction, uh, you know, $100 on a, on a good radar reflector. S spend your money on uh, and, and uh, make sure you have an AIS transceiver. With that, like I said, doesn't matter how rough it is, even if the whole radar is awash with a sea clutter, that triangle is going to show up and let me know long before that I have to make a move. And especially if you're sailing and you got your, and it's blowing 25 or 30 and you're healed over like that, your radar might not even be showing everything. They might not even show me because, because you're healed over so much. Anyway, a lot of people have gimbals, people do stuff. That's all fine and dandy. Just get yourself an AIS transceiver and um, w use it in conjunction with your radar. And that's what, that's what we have. Our radars have the AIS data both on the radar and on the chart plotter. So we have multiple waves of seeing you, whether it be visually as a uh, radar target and as an AIS target. So that's my rant for today. Hopefully you like it. Um, I know um, it's not exactly sailing stuff right here because I'm at work, but uh, that's what you have to deal with. <laughs> so anyway, be safe out there. And as always, I'll see you guys on the one.